Hey everyone, welcome back to She Prop Talk. I'm Beverly from Down in Creative Studios, and today I have a super special guest. I'm so excited that she said yes, she was available to talk to me. I have Heather from Smooth On here today. What's up, Heather? Hey, what's up, Beverly? I'm so glad you're here. Thank you so much for spending some time with me to answer some questions that uh, come up a lot in our She Prop group and in every group that I'm a part of. Yeah, um, yeah so um, so before we get started, um, can you tell me a little about a little bit about you and Smooth On and, and, and what you do there and what Smooth On is all about? Yeah, of course. Uh, well, I've been here at Smooth On for maybe about, I think I just hit about nine years now. Oh, wow. So the things that I do here as far as uh, that would relate to the sheep rock stuff is like tech support. So if someone mm -hmm. were to call Smooth On, you'd probably speak to me or one of my colleagues. And so we always kind of try to keep up with what the questions are from people, from customers. Mm -hmm. And it could be a wide range of things. Mm -hmm. We do get a lot of cosplay questions. Mm -hmm. um, and some of them uh, are not related, obviously, but we always try to help people. Uh, it's absolutely free. Someone could call in and do that. Um, the other things that I work with are some of the graphics. You, we met at a trade show, so, you know, obviously <laughs> we do trade shows and uh, mm -hmm. a lot of the stuff that either myself or my colleagues will make or people like you would make, mm -hmm. would display at our booth. Uh, to show people uh, kind of like the possibilities, like what can you do with our materials. Mm -hmm. um, as far as Smooth On itself, I mean, this company has been around for way longer than us. Um, so since oh, really? 1895. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Not doing all the cool stuff now. Right. You know, it started off differently um, mm -hmm. with like epoxy adhesives and things like uh -huh. that. But then eventually things started moving along. And obviously you can see that we have silicones, urethanes, expanding mm -hmm. urethane foams, expanding silicone foams. Um, coatings, adhesives, colorants, powders. I mean, honestly, okay. you name it, we probably have it, or we might be working on it. But um, <laughs> a lot of it, a lot of it is also multi-use because it's not really like it has to be just for uh, cosplay props or things like that. You can also use it for medical devices, mm -hmm. um, concrete applications. Uh, honestly, you name it, uh, food safe applications. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. So well, that's awesome. or jewelry. I mean, jewelry. It, jewelry does kind of work into the mm -hmm. cosplay and props and theater and TV shows and movies and all, all that stuff, all the fandoms. Yeah. It's, it's pretty amazing. I didn't realize how, how, uh, how much of a wide, yeah, span, I guess, um, of products and different, uh, different kinds of uses that we, we probably use your products every day <laughs> or at least get well, exposed to them I mean, or see them on, on, in movies and, you know. Absolutely. Pretty much all of the different movies and TV shows, True Blood, uh, all of the zombie TV shows like Walking Dead, uh, Marvel, uh, DC movies, all those, um, everything from the big guys to the little guys, they pretty, in, pre pretty much in some way have probably used our materials. Mm -hmm. But that's why I always tell people, um, like when we met even like a couple years ago, I was like, it's the same materials. You're not getting like, they use the movie special mm -hmm. version and you use the non- it's the same materials, it's how you use them. So that kind of makes it on like an even playing field to me, that anybody mm -hmm. can make these things, not just someone who was either trained or had 20 years experience. Anybody can make them, and that's where we come in, is we try to tell you, what do you want to use? Try that. What's your ultimate goal? Try this one. Sometimes yeah. we don't know, and we're like, try it. We're not sure, but we try to guide you so that you save time and money, et cetera, and have fun. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Having fun. I I yeah. have always appreciated how um, how accessible you guys are and, and how your website is also really, really informative. Like you can find a lot of tips and tricks and videos and how to's and the MDS, MD, wait, MSDS, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the safety sheets um, yeah. to just make sure you're doing everything safety, uh, safety yep. wise. Correct. Um, and uh, yeah, so listeners, if you are familiar with the Smooth On website, um, a lot of the questions that you might have, you can find on their website. And then also, yeah, give them a call because Heather might pick up the phone. <laughs> and I she's pretty rad. <laughs> I get people repeat. They're like, oh, I talked to you before. I actually enjoy that because just like us, I want to build that relationship. It's important yeah. to me. I mean, and then I get to know about your level, what you're working with. And if I think of stuff, I'm like, ooh, Beverly would love that. And yeah. 
make sense in that way. Um, so I, I love that so much. <laughs> it's good. Well, yeah. Well, um, so we, uh, a while ago, I posted a, a poll on the She Prep group um, because I knew that I'd get a bunch of really great questions um, because working with some of these materials, um, like you're saying, you know, movie houses and, and prop studios, they use those all the time. But um, for someone who's working in their dining room or their garage, uh, like me, sometimes um, knowing where to start and getting some of those questions answered so it's not quite as intimidating um, to maybe sure. do something new, do something different. So we've got a big list of questions that we're going to go over. And there are a lot of questions, so we will uh, we'll, we'll get to it. You ready? Ready. Totally okay. ready. We. All right. Um, doo -doo -doo. So the first one on the list here is about silicone prosthetics and if they can be reused. Sure. Can you use um, them over and over again? Uh, to a point, probably. Um, okay. I actually happen to have a silicone prosthetic right here, and there's another one here. It's kind of doesn't look like me, but so these are platinum cure silicone. Platinum so silicone. So a lot of the stuff you use is platinum cure silicone. It's okay. a type of silicone that we have. Um, a lot of people will use it because it's in contact with your skin. Okay. And so if I do use this over and over again, uh, we have a product called Skin Tight, Skin Safe. It's kind of like a bioadhesive. I'd put that on here. Maybe I'd want to be like a zombie or, or do some type of prosthetic where this may be applied to this part of my face or a brow. Okay. When you apply okay. that, the biggest part of reusing it would be how clean when it comes off. Mm -hmm. If it's if you have a thick application of the adhesive, mm -hmm. there might be a possibility it gets so thick that it, it destroys the actual look of how it looks on your body. Oh, so, okay. so that part... Um, like when you're doing subtle makeup, maybe age makeup, old age makeup or things like that, you know, if you add a lot of pieces that are, it starts gumming up with the, the adhesive, it's not mm -hmm. subtle anymore. So you might right, have to have right. another piece. So that's why they make the molds, obviously, like you make the rigid molds out of plastic so that you can just cast another piece, have it ready to go. But as far as reusability, there's a lot of times uh, we do the Halloween stuff, um, zombie walks are popular, but you, we'll just rip them off, clean it, clean it off your skin, and then maybe the next night you use it again. Yeah. Um, we'll use them all the time, and it's it, you can totally reuse them because they're not going anywhere. Yeah. I mean, it's just a piece of silicone. Yeah, so as long so, as you kind of take care of it and, and, and yeah, take, take care, care to, to yeah. follow the directions. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, number one, follow directions. Right. <laughs> right. Read the technical bulletin, right. Yes. But I mean, um, people, you know, people do reuse them over and over, and especially um, I know a lot of the zombie walks, or even like Walking Dead and that and those type of shows, mm -hmm. um, you've got dozens and dozens, sometimes hundreds, if you're doing a horde of, mm -hmm. of characters that need quick, quick makeups put on. You, right. you know, you can reuse them because you've got day after day of shooting. Um, yeah. Even for a theater, you know, the distance. What is it? Twenty foot rule. Twenty foot rule for theater. So oh they may not gosh, be I don't know. Twenty. I bet. I, I bet you're like, right. Maybe I don't know, but as long as it looks good from that far away, it's good. Right. So from right. here to here, it may not look that great. <laughs> You right. can totally them. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I, I think in cosplay is the five foot rule, and that's Maybe. like that. That's so that when you when you're like getting your face like right up into the thing, you're like, okay, let, yeah. let me get away from it. It's does it really? Do I really need to go back in there and spend two more hours? Yeah. It's um, like or, a selfie. Will we get... we'll look good right. in a selfie? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. We're done. <laughs> yeah. Um. So you mentioned platinum silicone, uh, platinum cure silicone for the prosthetics. Is there? So I know that there are a few different kinds of silicones. Some of them are um, like Ecoflex is, are those all skin safe or are all oh, yeah, platinum the, silicones um, skin safe? This one happens to be Dragon Skin FX Pro. So the okay. entire Dragon Skin series is platinum cure. Um, Ecoflex is platinum cure. Um, and that just refers to um, the casting, uh, excuse me, the type of um, silicone it is as far as the curing. So the platinum, okay. there is platinum in it. And that's also called an additive cure, additive cure or addition cure. So you got your A and your B. You do okay. everything correct. You follow all the instructions. You mix them together. Additive. You get a you get something. Okay. Um, if you do tin cure, tin cure because it has tin in it. You're generally you can touch it, but you're generally not having it for prolonged skin use okay. because of tin in it. Okay. Tin is also known as a condensation cure. So part of that condensation does need humidity, some atmospheric humidity. Um, you're still measuring and processing it, but it's a, just a different type of material. They usually don't like each other. Okay. So if you make mold out of one, you don't want to put the other one in it. So tin to platinum, they don't usually cure properly. Okay. But 
platinum to platinum or tin to tin is usually okay. But for our purposes of cosplay and skin safe, I usually would recommend if it's going to touch the skin, the platinum cure is the way to go. Okay. Okay. So it does yeah. cost a little bit more, a little bit more because platinum or tin, platinum right. does cost a little bit more, but yeah. skin safe versus not. Right. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's terrible or anything. They both equally get the perfect detail. Mm -hmm. So both mold materials don't compromise as far as that. They have great longevity. Mm -hmm. um, so none of that's compromised, just kind of how they cure and okay. whether or not you really want to put them on your skin and a few other little things. Okay. Oh, that's really good. I think we probably talked about one of the other questions that we had on our list. Yeah, we did <laughs> what, talk What's about the difference that. between platinum like, and tin, tin silica? That no, that's perfect. Both well, yeah. <laughs> perfect. You're so good. <laughs> right. Um, all right. Cool. So let's see. The next question. How do I prevent bubbles in my silicone? And I know that is a big, big, big um, nuisance for a lot of uh, for um, for pouring silicone, for brushing it on, for picking up that detail. That's always something that I am struggling with as well. Yeah, I mean, I think it's an important question. Um, a couple of things that you can try. So you can first off kind of stack the cards, stack the deck in your favor by using a lower viscosity. Okay. Uh, silicone viscosity, you can think of it as, is this material really thick or is it really thin? Mm -hmm. um, so Mold Star series, and if you also look at some of the Dragon Skin series um, that say NV for no vacuum, um, those are going to be lower viscosity, so they're going to be thinner compared to some of the other materials. When you have the thicker material, imagine the bubbles are like fighting their way out and it's so thick and hard to get out. Um, with a lower viscosity, it just makes it that much easier to get out if there's air bubbles. Um, the other thing is, is when you're mixing the material, instead of like going insane, you're adding more bubbles by right. mixing. Right. Right. Which we want a thorough mix. We don't want an insanity mix. So what you're going <laughs> to do, I mean, we're not trying to like, you know, get a workout. I mean, you could, but you want to be. It's thorough. not like whip, like making whipped cream or right. anything. Right. Yeah. We're okay. Not, like, right. This is not a scrambled egg, you know. This right. Is, okay. So then as you're, as you're mixing it, you're being thorough, you're scraping the sides, you're scraping the bottom, like 101, right? Okay. Um, but then you're not whipping more air into it. Uh, the other thing is when you pour. So if I pour, let's say I'm here and I'm pouring here, I'll hold it up high and okay. pour a long, thin stream. Okay. So as that material comes over the lip of my pouring container or my mm -hmm. bucket or whatever, it's going to stretch, and those bubbles will also stretch, and you're hoping oh. that you're like, hoping Gotcha. That you're um, right on. So that's the best you can do if you don't have equipment. If you want to invest okay. in equipment, you can certainly buy it from uh, not necessarily – well, Smoothon has it. Um, Reynolds Advanced Materials has it. Other distributors have it. But you can certainly go to, like, Harbor Freight or Amazon and buy something. But um, pressure chamber and okay. vacuum chamber, I don't know if you use those or not. Do you, you have you those? You know, I have a vacuum chamber that I is still in the box. I haven't I okay. haven't opened it yet. I just haven't well, gotten to pump? that part yet. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry? Did you buy the vacuum pump? Yes. Yes. Okay. I have a pump to go That's along with it. You're like, cha-ching, cha-ching. It's an investment. You know? <laughs> it really like, is. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have one. You're better than me. I don't own one. No way. It's like more money. So uh, I, I take that into consideration um, when I'm recommending materials. Is kind of mm -hmm. like um, if I was making this and not being here, what, what would I really have to take into consideration? Because that is important, your time, your money, your effort. Sometimes it's unavoidable to get a mm -hmm. perfect that you'd have to invest in certain things. And it also depends, like you said, what's the rule? Do you care right. how close you are? Right. You, just want to, you just want to get it done. Because right. um, none of these are unusable if they came out with bubbles. It's just maybe not perfect or optimal. But yeah. if you use the pressure chamber, um, that's our number one way of getting bubble-free. So okay. a pressure chamber or pressure vessel or pressure pot, you might hear them say, okay. um, you use a compressor. And so... I have, let's say I, I want to make a, a resin casting or even a, or even a silicone casting, either, okay. either one. Okay. Um, I need to make sure that the mold that I use has been made in that pressure chamber because your mold and your casting could have bubbles in it, right? So right. that's like a big consideration. Some people, oh, I've had this mold for like five years. And then they, they're like, finally, I can invest in a pressure chamber. And then they didn't realize there were bubbles in that mold that they didn't realize were there. And they're on the surface of that mold cavity. And what happens is, is so you have these bubbles and they're in there. You don't know they're there. When you have the pressure, which is 60 PSI for the entire cure cycle, it makes those bubbles flat. So okay. basically they're imperceivable. 
Okay. But if they were on the surface of your mold, if, if this was like your mold right here, here's your negative cavity and there is a bubble here and it flattens, it might make a divot. Oh. So the divot then, when you pour resin or something, the divot, which is a negative, becomes like a pimple or a positive. Mm. Okay. So your mold is now permanently damaged. So you, I always try to tell people, are you making a new mold? Are you trying to use an old mold? Because uh, I don't want you to damage the mold gotcha. if you want to do pressure casting. Okay. Um, so make your mold in the pressure chamber. Then you can make all your castings in the pressure chamber, and you're good. Yeah. Um, if, if you don't want to do pressure chamber, that's okay. The next best is the vacuum chamber that you like you have. Mm -hmm. um, and for the vacuum chamber, the biggest thing is 29 inches of mercury, and that's just like a measurement. So you'll see the little dial, and the dial will slowly go to 29 inches of mercury, which is just the measurement. If it goes to 25, that's good enough. No, it's not good enough. <laughs> uh, you want it to hit 29. Okay. It's, it's literally pulling, it's pulling, pulling out the bubbles. It's like okay. five bubbles, and you'll see right. it actually kind of gurgle, like yeah, bubbling. Yeah, I've, I've up seen. I rise. love those videos on yeah, online. It's, it's, yeah, or I something. Like watching. It's yeah, very, it's mesmerizing. Yes. So what you want to do for that is let it rise, break, and fall at least once. Okay. And it's like gurgling okay. and wheeling. But the okay. other thing is, is let's say um, I have a whole container full of silicone or resin, and let's say my container stops here. Okay. And where is it going to rise, break, and fall? Oh, out of the, out of the oh, oh, what a mess. Stop. Trust okay. me. <laughs> I've done it a million. It's terrible, and you're kind of like, did anyone see that? Okay, let me just clean it up. It happens. So what you want to do is basically allow enough room in the container so that you can let it rise, break, and fall, because it'll rise up. Sometimes they double and triple and more, depending. Okay. And so then it has to rise, break, fall, and you'll see it kind of mellow, and it mellows, and you're like, I'm good. And when you, you know, basically turn the pressure, uh, turn the vacuum pump off, and it settles, you take it out. You still don't want to be starting to like pour like an insane person because then you could still get bubbles from right. pouring all crazy. I mean, we're not making brownies here. You're going to sit crazy. Here, you're gonna <laughs> still, still pour in a long thin stream. Okay. Okay. And the whole time in your mind, you're like, what's the pot life? You can't do this if your pot right. life is 30 seconds. Right. Right. Yeah. So you can't be like, well, what happened? And it's like, did you read the tech bulletin and whatnot? Uh, so right. okay. you want to make sure you have enough time because – the pressure chamber, the vacuum pump, all those type of things. It takes us a little bit of time to like come to the temperature. Uh, it's not temperature, excuse me, the pressure that it needs mm -hmm. to hit that 29. You know, it takes time for it to get there. So yeah. if you're using a pump that's not strong enough or you're using something with like a 30-second pot life, all that timing is super critical. Okay. So and what you you're saying is test. <laughs> test a test. smaller amount. Test yeah. it. Yeah. Cool. I, I equate stuff okay. to cooking. Yeah, I mean, I'm always like, it's kind of like cooking. Yeah. Like, if you make a bad omelet, try it again. Do another yeah. one. Yeah. A little bit different price range, but right. you know, right. the same <laughs> ingredients, right? So. Well, that's really great advice. I'm, I'm really glad we're talking about this because, I, I, I haven't ta I haven't unboxed my, my, uh, my, my new toy yet, but I will. Awesome. I will. You'll love and it. yes, it's gonna be fun. I'm, just, yeah, I'm really fine. looking forward to it. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to do some tests, which is like my jam. I, I love testing. I yes. I love it so much. Um, if you can see my Captain Marvel back there, um, which we'll talk about. I miss it. Uh, I love it. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited about it. It looks so good. Yeah, I, I was really um, I was really happy to. Well, let's see where we are on uh, on our list here. Okay. Because um, we will get to this. Okay, we'll hold on to that. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, oh, okay. The next one, is there an optimal silicone to use for, I lost my, I lost my place. <laughs> is there an optimal silicone to use for two-part mold? Uh, I mean, you could use almost any silicone for that. Okay. So the biggest thing for two-part molds is, am I doing a pour-on mold? Mm -hmm. Am I doing a brush-on mold? Mm -hmm. So if you're doing a pour-on mold, then we have molds, mold materials like the Mold Star series. Um, dragon skin, almost any of them you can use because you can just mix it and pour it. Mm -hmm. If you want to do a brush on style mold, um, that particular series would be like rebound, very simple to use, but you can still make a two part brush on mold. Mm -hmm. The biggest thing between the two parts of silicone, so let's pretend you have like your two parts, your top and your bottom, or however you make it. If you make the first half of that mold and you don't put release agent mm -hmm. for the second half, sometimes it becomes yeah. a one part mold. Yeah, I've done so that. Done that's that. critical. <laughs> 
Um, I've, I've helped friends um, try to cut them open, like where they think the seam line was. We don't know why. So we troubleshoot ourselves all the time. It helps yeah. everyone else because we're like, what did we do? Yeah. Um, but with that, you know, you might, when you apply the release agent, you would use Ease Release 200 or 205, follow the instructions, spray brush spray. The biggest thing is, is like, don't get too excited because then people, like, even, my, even <laughs> myself, Calm down. I'm like, let's go, let's do this. Uh, I mean, we're like, that's the thing is, we all love doing like, a lot of this stuff I made and also my colleagues have made, but we love it. We're, we're into it, but also um, don't rush that because if you want your mold to last longer, you want the two pieces to separate, give it like five minutes. Maybe I sometimes wait longer out of paranoia. Um, so 15 minutes, I'll wait yeah. a little bit sometimes, but five minutes should work. And then that release agent is set up and ready to go. Um, the other thing is, is when you're doing it, um, registration keys. Um, I don't yeah. know if that's, you're, you've made these type of molds before. Yes, yes. I um, I think I, I forget which. I think I was, uh, I took a deep dive into your website to, to learn how to do a brush on mold. There's actually really great, yeah, cool. you guys, listeners, there's a really some really great uh, short videos on how to do that. Um, so if you're making a helmet or if you're making um, anything that has to have a cavity on the inside of it, um, or like if you're thinking, well, I'm just going to pour some resin into the in, into this thing and kind of slosh it around. Um, that could be a brush on mold. You'll save a, a lot lens. of. If yes. the lens is curved, yep, you might exactly. want to capture the curve as well, the concave as well as the outside, as opposed to something you right. don't care about what the back looks like. Yes. So you might do that. But helmets are super popular. Masks and helmets are super yep. popular for that. Um, yes. The other part, too, is, I mean, if you don't use a registration key type of setup your mold could have weird alignment but the registration is just kind of think of it as like male female parts negative positive so then they fit and there's no other way for this mold to go together and it makes mm -hmm. the seam lines reduced but um let's say for some reason i always tell people it's not the end of the world if your mold your two-part mold does stick you gotta cut it out right and do it again or right. you're just gonna, <laughs> i mean the world won't end but optimally you don't have to do that but I mean, the videos on our website, if you go on smoothon.com and you just on the keyword area, uh, I'm always like, let me get there quickly. The fastest way I can tell people I'll, I'll either type in two part, uh, two dash part, two part mold, those type of things, multi part mold. And then the whole listing will come up and they are pretty short. We want to keep people awake, you know, so yeah, we don't want right, to yeah. minutes long unless we have to, but we try to make them pretty quick. Um, and they usually will list the materials that are used also. Yeah. Um, and if there's any question, I always tell people, I'd rather help you pick the materials before than solve a problem later right. because it's your time and your money that you're spending. And so yeah. I don't care if it's a pint kit or 10, you know, 10,000 gallons of material. It's still important to me. Mm -hmm. So definitely give a call and just be like, is this right? Because yeah. I have no problem telling you that's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just to make sure that you, just to make sure that right. you have you know, someone told me, I read in a forum, this type of stuff, a lot of people have really great advice, mm -hmm. and sometimes people get lucky that something worked, but it's not repeatable. We yeah. want repeatable success for you, right. yeah. uh, assured success if possible. So give us a call. It takes two seconds, and then you're good to go. Perfect. So this is a question that I'm interest, really interested in knowing more about, and I, I always feel like, okay, so number one, whenever people ask me a question... And they say, they preface it with, I know this is a really dumb question, but like, okay, there are no dumb questions. So I'm kind of, I have to, I have to follow my own advice right now because I'm, this question, this question was actually my question that I put on the, uh, uh, on the, on the poll. Um, what is the difference between silicone and urethane? So it is a deep question and it's also okay. I think, project specific okay. um, or application specific, why you might want to use one over the other. Um, when I look at a urethane rubber versus a silicone rubber, there's also uh, urethane foam and then urethane resin or plastic. And you'll hear people say polyurethane or urethane, same idea. Um, with silicone, there, we don't really have like a silicone resin, so there's no equivalent there. But okay. we do have a silicone expanding foam. They, but when I look at the two of them uh, for myself and how I might explain one or the other, silicones... Um, tend to last a lot longer in what I would call your mold library. Okay. So your mold library is like behind you, you might stack all your molds. Yeah. You know, you might have drawers you pull out and it's like all my molds are here. 
So oh, that sounds that sounds fabulous. Shoes, right? I, 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 would, shoes, right? I would love right? to have that for so, my shoes. <laughs> I would love that. Yeah. Oh, I I'm going to visit customers and like I love it. I'll go into this beautiful place and they have it all perfect and I'm like, ooh, yes. I love how you have your stuff, your mold stacked and they're so organized. It's just oh one of those gosh. things. Yeah. Like you, you just picture opening this thing and it's like the light comes down and it's like, oh, oh look my at this gosh, it like, looks so good. like music to cue, like a yes. bright, like light. Exactly. And, yeah. Angels and doves kind yes. of at the same time. Oh right? my gosh. And then there's just Perfect. silicone rubber or should I say smooth on silicone rubber? Yes. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so between the two of them, so the urethanes versus the silicones, uh, library life. They tend to last longer, and it also depends on what, what product you're using. Like the dragon skin and the Ecoflex that we've talked about, Platinum Cures, those can last probably longer than we're going to live. Um, they can last decades, many, many decades. Okay. Um, but think of it also as like a pair of shoes. If you put an old pair of shoes in your library, there's still an old pair of shoes and you can't wear right. them. Right. So if I put an old beat-up mold in my library, it's still unusable. Right. For the most part. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So you, if you want to still use it, let's say down the line you want to make – that emblem again. Mm -hmm. Don't put an old used up mold that you couldn't use today in the mold library. Yeah. But if you want in 20 years to use a platinum cure silicone mold like dragon skin, mm -hmm. put one in that still has life in it. You could come back to it and use it just fine. I have molds from when I first started around nine years ago. They're perfectly fine. Oh. Um, when you look at the Umu series, Umu is a tin cure silicone. That particular chemistry is unique. You might only get a year, maybe two. Oh, okay. It's just a different, just a different chemistry. Um, but some of the other ones that are tin cure, like Mold Max, mm -hmm. those you get five to seven years. And it, it's all dependent on how much did you beat that thing up. And that's also production life versus library life. Production life um, would be like how many times am I casting into it every day? Uh -huh. um, I'm doing 20 pours a day. That You're going to kill that a lot more quickly than 20 pours in a year. Sure. You know, so right. the, or one. <laughs> Or yeah, one tour. <laughs> right. Or did you use release agent, you know? Uh, right. Kind of, or did you yeah. not? Whatever. Right. So using release agent makes the mold last longer because you just lubed it up. It's like yeah. eye cream. Yeah. You, want, you don't have to use it, but you want to use it. Keep that sex longer. Use uh, the eye cream. Use what do you, the release what do you, agent. What are you saying? Am I, am I too close to the camera? Are you seeing All I know, if I'm lines. pixelating, I'm good. Don't worry about it. It's all good. <laughs> It's, it's that, it's that 20 feet rule. Is it 20, five feet, 10 feet? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Perfect. Let me just, let me just scoot back. No, I'll just come like back. <laughs> um, so, so can you pour resin into a urethane mold? Yes, yes, yeah. Okay. Um, oh, and also to answer the rest of your question, the urethanes versus the silicones also, um, the silicones to me, they're a little more supple and they have a higher heat deflection temperature. Okay. So, you, you know, platinum cure, you might get 450 Fahrenheit as far as the heat deflection temperature versus maybe a urethane that's a lot lower. You might be in the mid to low 200, 150 to maybe 180, 200, depending. So whatever your um, goals are, if you need a higher heat deflection temperature, you might want to go silicone versus urethane. If I were to hold two of them together, the same um, shore hardness, which is a whole other question probably. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> if I were to stretch one versus the other... I always feel like my silicones are a little more supple and more mm -hmm. stretchy, elastic. Mm -hmm. The urethanes are bendy and flexible, but they're not as stretchy to me when yeah. I use them. Um, now, there's certainly people who maybe I make um, like a Batman outfit or a Catwoman outfit. Yeah. Maybe I want it to have that kind of leather-like texture feeling, yeah. so I use a urethane rubber. Okay. But a silicone, I might do something or I want it to really move subtly with my face if I make prosthetic. So those silicones capture the subtleness a little bit more because they're more flesh-like in certain, depending on the ones you use, okay. which is why we can help steer people in the right direction for that. But um, other than that, urethanes, you said, can I put a resin, a, a urethane resin into a urethane rubber? The other reason why they're separate is also silicones, they're like the best for release properties. I could mm -hmm. pour resin and not use a release agent, I'm good. If I pour yeah. resin into a urethane, it's going to bond. So you oh, have to okay. Since like universal mold release. Okay. Otherwise, it's basically like glue into glue. Okay. So you can't really do that. So you're almost pretty much almost always required to use a release agent with a urethane rubber mold um, versus a silicone. Cool. I can pour that all day and not really worry too much depending on what right. you put in there. Right. So that's a huge positive. If people, um, let's say it's going to take me time to make 
um, a resin piece of um, sculpture, a, a, a urethane resin sculpture that I'm going to paint. Um, maybe I'm doing a scale model or something, or, or so, something where it's going to take me time. If I use release agent in either of those molds, I have to spend time, maybe like three or four times scrubbing that to remove the release agent. So the release agent did its job, which is great, but now right. I have to spend this time to remove it. So if you right. were like, I need to save money, urethanes tend to be slightly cheaper than the mm -hmm. stones. I'm going to save a little money and buy a urethane. They're both going to capture detail. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. But now you have to buy the release agent. Now you have to clean that off. Mm -hmm. Versus what's, So sometimes I find it to be a balance. Yeah. Is my time or my money more valuable? Mm -hmm. Of course, they're both important, but for sure. the customer or yourself to decide right. what's more important. Oh, sure. Yeah. We're, we're always trying to find ways to, to save some money or save some time. Absolutely. Depends on, on, you know, what your resources are, what, how much time you have oh, for that absolutely. project. Absolutely. So, um, so the urethane, um, what do you, what are some of the, the product, the urethane product names, um, on your, uh, so like have? we have urethane resins okay. and urethane foams and urethane rubbers. So, like, the rubbers that are popular would be the Vitaflex, which is okay. a pourable rubber, Rioflex, which is a pourable. Uh, I might use Rioflex if I'm, maybe I'm making um, just a, a casting. Maybe I, I could even pour gypsum into it or plaster oh. into that if I wanted to. Um, I could pour wax. I could make soap. I could make oh. candles. So, okay. blow in your mind. If you, so, the cool thing is, is they're very versatile. Um, the Vitaflex is popular. I might do, like, a concrete casting into that. Maybe I want to make some stone veneer or something out of concrete, boom. But at the same time, those same mold rubbers that we're talking about can also be used for castings. Mm -hmm. So I can make gaskets or I can make, uh, maybe I want to make a fake um, a fake handle, you yeah. know, like a rubber. Instead yeah. of like using wood, I want to make a replica. So yeah. even though most of the time they're used as mold rubbers, that technically you could use them also as, as casting materials. Okay. Um, yeah, there's I think also I've seen someone use a uh, Vitaflex for, for armor, which, yes, I have. which I, that's something I'd like to try. Um, yeah. I have a little trial kit of that stuff. Um, really excited to, I, think I, I think I remember the Simpact. Yes. That was yes. like one of my favorites. I love Simpact. Super abrasion resistant, impact resistant. Um, you could use it for LARPing. Um, you could oh. use it for armor in general, but it's like, I could hit that thing and it's like, okay. And, and it's, uh, and it's a little bit flexible. Little right? stuff there. Yeah. Um, yeah. you make it thick enough, it'll hold its shape, but then still bend. Maybe uh -huh. I want to make a training knife or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. Some people will do that. I, for I like that. That my little, yeah. So that's all you get. <laughs> Done. Done. It's all. But like, you know, that's me doing my little, <laughs> but then it'll bend and not snap like a piece of plastic would and you're not gonna yeah. like totally make someone go to the hospital necessarily. Right, right. So could you walk. could you could you make like a sword? Could you pour a sword yeah. mm -hmm. and using Absolutely. that kind of material? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now cool. some people depending on the length of the sword. Mm -hmm. uh, just to give you an example, I do have Oh, you have a sword. A sword. <laughs> um, so this is actually made out of our Simpact also. So you oh, can okay. see it does have a little flex to it. Yeah. Um, you may not, depending, we have um, two different ones, but the firmer one won't flex as much compared, and it also depends on how thick you make it. Okay. Um, the handle is resin, so we can okay. have a combination. Oh, okay. um, some people, depending on what they want to do, maybe this whole thing is soft foam, pretend, but I need it to not be floppy. So yeah. I might embed like a dowel rod in there or yeah. some type of reinforcement. Sometimes they leave the dowel rod to like here uh -huh. because then you can bend the tip and not just like stab somebody. Right. So which there's, is, there's no, reasons. Which is not nice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I have this guy here. This is made out of urethane foam. So okay. this is my little hatchet guy. So it's a little wobbly. If this wobble, like say I'm doing a haunt, we, we actually have a lot of haunts that use our materials. Mm -hmm. um, maybe this is too wobbly and it breaks, you know, breaks the, um, the fantasy of that this is real. Right. So maybe they make this out of a rigid foam. And then okay. this is out of the soft foam. Oh, that's so cool. it really de it, it depends on the project because yeah. if it's just on display somewhere, who cares if it's out of foam? You right, make it right, out yeah, exactly. It. Yeah. But with this type of thing, I mean, I can't tell you how many people have hit each other with this, and it's still <laughs> it's still viable, you know, because it's made out of flexible foam. So oh, it is definitely cool. fun to do. That's um, really cool. Stuff, but um, it depends on. That's why I say yeah. it's not. Sometimes people are like, tell me exactly what I want. I need to know. Sometimes it's project to project and sometimes yeah. it's, 
it's like you said, budgetary or yeah. sometimes 20 things will work. You yeah, just want to figure sure. out what works for you. Yeah. Um, can you, so this is on, uh, on our list. Um, can you paint urethane? So can those, the sword and the, um, hatchet yeah. there, they look like they've been painted. Yes. You can do it a couple different ways. Some people they'll add color intrinsically. Sorry about that. That's okay. <laughs> I had my thing off. Okay. Let me start all over. So yes, you can paint the materials. So we've got painting rubber, painting foam, painting resin. So there's similarities and differences. So if I was going to paint a urethane resin, we'll start with resin, plastic. Okay. So okay. I pull it out of my mold. Did I use release agent? If I didn't use release agent, I could prime it and then paint it. If I did use release agent, you want to clean that off because otherwise stuff will bead off. And it'll, yeah. it'll stick. Oh, I, I know all about that. Oh, yeah. I've had <laughs> that, that has happen. happened. I've That's had not it where fun. Like, this is great. This looks so good. And then I, I do another one, and the second one didn't work. And I'm like, right. what happened? Right, right. Should have known, should have known. But, um, so once you clean that release agent off, um, and then once you decide, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to paint this and it's a rigid piece of plastic, hard piece of plastic, not bendy. Um, you can use automotive, um, primer, like a high quality okay. one, such like plastic coat, sandable primer. Um, you could use uh, bulldog he- adhesion promoter. There's a lot of different ones, but the key is high quality. Uh, okay. once you get that primer on your paint is now just sticking to the primer. So yeah. we usually recommend enamel or acrylic paints. And then, um, it's just basically, you're doing art at that point. You could use yeah. an airbrush, you could hand paint it, whatever, use a toothpick, whatever you want to do. Um, if you use something flexible, such as a urethane rubber, we have a product called Uricoat. I don't know if you got to try Uricoat yet. I have some, yes, yes. Did you try it yet? I did, I did try it. Um, I'm not sure that I used it for what it was intended for because I was just testing some stuff out. I was trying to see how flexible it was. I just yeah. put it on some foam and it would stay pretty flexy. Um, yeah. and I think I put, I put a little bit of a tint in it as well. I colored it a little bit just to see how brushable it was. Um, it was pretty thick. You totally could. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, when you brush it on, you probably would end up doing layers, I would say, cause we have yeah. a couple different coatings that are good. We have the Eurocoat. Um, we have that Epsilon Pro. We've talked about a bunch of different things in the past, you and I, mm-hmm. um, but the Eurocoat <laughs> is a flexible urethane coating that's rubber kind of. So if I have a rubber piece that I, cause rubber, you want it to move generally. Mm-hmm. So if it was a rigid piece, um, it doesn't or foam. matter. Or foam. Exactly. Or foam. Flexible yeah. foam. Flexible yeah. foam. Yeah. yeah. You want it to flex and move. Mm-hmm. So you could use, um, something that has a flexibilizer in it. T-shirt paints, puffy mm-hmm. paints, cause mm-hmm. those all will move and flex with it. If yep. you use something that doesn't have that, it tends to crack yeah. or flip off, which you know, like I said, if it's something just sitting there, paint doesn't matter. But when you interact with it or you're walking like you do, you're walking through like all this crowd. People are bumping into you. It's not even you. Other people just bump into you. You spend all these hours on something. Right. Good paint. Get the paint that works. Right. So definitely something flexible that will move with a flexible item. Mm-hmm. With these, you can use the Eurocoat as a paint. And if you read the tech bulletin, we talk about thinning it out. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't have to thin it out, but you can. Um, the other option would be coloring it, what we would call intrinsically to give it like a base coat color. So if any paint were to come off, it wouldn't look so glaring. Yeah. It wouldn't be obvious as much. So if this was a brown handle, I might color this dark brown mm-hmm. and then maybe I add some highlights or depth. So if something flaked off, it would still be kind of brown under there. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the biggest thing would be to me, the biggest thing is removing the release agent because mm-hmm. people forget that. <laughs> and I find it to be very time consuming so for me, the balance is no release agent sometimes because yeah. I want to sit there and remove it. It's not that it's difficult. It's time consuming and you yeah. want to really spend time cleaning that off. Yeah. Um, if it's a piece of resin, you could use something like Cascade dishwashing gel and scrub mm-hmm. it you know, really good. Mm-hmm. Um, you could sandblast it with beads if you have that in your back room. Oh, that's um, fancy. Plaster. Yeah. I don't have that either. I, I don't these. have that. I got these. I That's got it. my hands. Me right, too. Exactly. Or an old toothbrush. I've scrubbed with an old toothbrush before. And it's like work. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. It is. It's really yes. good because you do extend the life of your mold, which is amazing. But then finding the balance. But then once it's cleaned off, the surface is ready. Prime it. Paint it. Good to go. Um, so, foam is the same way. Flexible. Flexible paints if you're using flexible foam. Okay. Um, you can add fabric medium to pretty much any acrylic paint 
as well, yep. which is, it just comes in a bottle. It kind of looks like yep. any kind of paint. You can get it at Amazon or wherever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know that uh, one of the biggest questions and the biggest things for cosplayers is how do I, how do I seal my EVA foam, but still have it and have it, you know, protect something that I can paint, but also something that can stay a little bit flexible so that I can move around in it. Yeah. Um, um, so I mean, what would you recommend? So there's two main things. When we talked about the flexibility part, um, there's that rubberized kind of flexibility, which the Eurocoat would lend itself to. I have two pieces here. They're small, but I don't know if you can see them. So this is just craft foam, okay. simple, skinny little craft foam. Or you could use the, the foam mats or the big foam rolls, same idea. Mm -hmm. um, so on top of this, I don't know if you can see it. This That's is my really shiny. Cover. Yeah, it's got um, some little shiny little flecks of our cast magic in there. It's a mm, purple. I love I the cast magic. It. It's so fun. Yeah. So listen, this, listeners, cast magic is, uh, is their metallic powders that you can get and, um, really you can mix them into your projects. They're, they're really, really nice. I use them. on. Yeah, I have, <laughs> this has cast magic. If you can see the glitteriness of it, oh, cool. um, this has cast magic so you can get metallic pearlescent. I think they're cool. I love them. Yeah. Um, the possibilities are endless. They're, they're really fun. <laughs> I love them. But look at this. See how I can make this kind of, it's still, I can still flex it really easily. Yeah. So that's um, foam with Eurocoat. Eurocoat on it. Yeah. <clears throat> so the thicker you make that, the less it's going to ripple like that. But it depends right. on you. Yeah. Um, the other thing is this, and this is the Epsilon Pro. So this is the same piece of foam, but I have Epsilon Pro on it. And you can kind of see, I can't really bend that. Um, <laughs> this Epsilon Pro is an epoxy. And the epoxy is basically a plastic. And, but you apply it in thin layers. Um, I always tell people if you do one, because you're, the con is like in two days, <laughs> uh, so you don't have time. Yeah. One yeah. will get you there, but it will crack. Yeah. Um, two coats is, this is like to me the bare minimum, but yeah. three, um, three will be very durable to where yeah. I'm not too worried about it. Two yeah. is kind of like, okay, this thing right here, my little Nazgul gauntlet, um, this guy is all craft foam, just your basic little go to Michael's and get a craft foam mm -hmm. and on a glove. I love and that. So all, all of this um, is basically just Epsilon Pro. Okay. And so that's where the armor part, you know, the metal armor mm -hmm. came from. But I could have done five coats, three coats, one coat. I did two coats onto this. It's okay. fine. Um, just depends which so, one. So you can sand, you can sand Epsilon Pro, but you can't sand your coat. Is right. That, so am I right? Um, yes. Okay. All of the urethane plastics, um, and also the epoxy, which is Epsilon or Epsilon Pro, because they're plastics. I could drill it. I could sand it. Uh, if I make it thick enough, I could take it to a belt sander, um, mm -hmm. or hand sanding, whatever you want to do. Dremel it, because mm -hmm. uh, I've added texture before with the Dremel. Um, you could also, depending on what you're doing, attempt to use to do, to do a, a rubber, but it gums up because usually if you take it to a belt sander to heat. Oh, uh, sure. I yeah. can drill a hole through a thick piece. That's an thick awesome piece, smell, too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It smells, <laughs> yeah. And always wear your, protect, your dust mask. Yes. Always wear your protection. Don't breathe in that dust. Right. Protect yourself. Yeah. yeah. But you yeah. could drill. If I have a, if this was like, I mean, this is silicone, this mold, um, my little gem mold. This is silicone, and I can drill a hole in that. And same if this was urethane. I could drill a hole in it, but sanding it, right. it's just not it doesn't yeah. really work in that way. You can so. sew through silicone as well, which I have done with my fabric and uh, and your thing. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So that would that. So if you were to sew, let's see, I'm thinking like a like a Superman emblem or like Batman or something like that, people can if they if that's what they want to do, they can they can attach yeah, together. You can make them okay. separately and then apply them. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So I know we're, we're probably getting uh, off the list here, but um, while we're on that topic of getting things attached to suits and fabrics, so the other question that comes up a lot is, how do I attach some of these urethane rubbers and the silicones to my costume? So what kinds of glues? Like, let, So let's start with EVA foam. Um, if someone called you and said, hey, I, I want to make a Superman emblem or, or a Batman emblem and I want to attach it to my, the fabric of my costume, how would you, how would you, what would you recommend? 
I mean, there's a couple different adhesives that we have. Mm -hmm. So if I wanted to um, do sil um, silicone, silicone really doesn't stick to much, which is why it's a great mold rubber. And I know for you, you've done this multiple times. <laughs> yeah. You use the silpoxy. Yeah. So the silpoxy is basically uh, a one part. Instead of our normal A and B, it's just a one part, one component little squeezy tube. Looks like a small piece of tube, a small toothpaste tube. Um, that is a silicone adhesive. So for that particular one, uh, what you're doing is basically uh, you have a cured piece of silicone. Usually it's silicone to silicone or silicone to a substrate. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes not all substrates are easily um, adhered to. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's got to be cleaned and degreased, but sometimes mm -hmm. it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. um, but for the most part, if, if I had to pick silicone, and that's something I want to adhere, the silpoxy is the way to go. Uh, you talked about sewing it. That would add further insurance that it would stay, I would say. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah that's challenging. Um, I have some pieces that I made, and I put power mesh in them. I put some fabric in them to give them more strength. Oh, so it's not cool. really adhesive, but it gives me something that it can bite onto also. Yeah. If, I wanted, if I wanted to sew it, um, this power mesh, which is basically like a stretchable four-way. Um, you can buy two-way, four-way, whatever you want, nylon mesh. Think of pantyhose, but yeah. something along those lines. Oh, okay. It makes this so much stronger mm -hmm. as opposed to just silicone, yeah. right? So if I got a nick in it or a tear... It would unzip and it would just rip open. But with this fabric mesh that I have, for instance, in here, oh. it's so much stronger, way stronger. Well, that's really cool. So, did you, when you poured your silicone, did you pour it on top of the mesh, or did you put the mesh on top of your mold? So, I'm, I'm imagining you had like a one-part mold that was sitting on a I table. Didn't say that. <laughs> I actually, I actually have done it both ways. Okay. So, um, just to give you an idea, so this, I don't know if you can see that. This is ostrich skin. Oh, and so this is a so you can get really good detail. So this gray piece here, the see, the white that you might see on these edges is the power mesh sticking out. Oh, okay. And I didn't trim it on purpose because I wanted people to see it. Yeah. And so what I did is I put a very very thin layer of the silicone. I used Dragon Skin FX Pro. Okay. I laid that in while it was still tacky. So the pot life is still open, still tacky. I had pre-cut my squares out to match this. So I pre-planned, I did a whole bunch of these, and I pre-planned a whole bunch of them. Um, this is actually like reptile, like alligator skin. Anyway, but I waited for a minute because if I let it, it's a balancing act. Because if I do it too early and the pot life is open for a long time, it might sink. Sink, yeah. Okay. So <laughs> I kind of waited a little bit till it was a little tackier. And then I just glided on and put my power mesh on there, um, okay. which is like my stretch fabric. And then... If you want it to just be like that and be happy, you can let it go. But I then mixed up more and poured a little on top to encapsulate it. You don't oh, have okay. to do that, but I wanted okay. it sandwiched so right. that the back didn't show it because you don't really see it. But this is still super thin. Yeah. I mean, it's it's crazy thin. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you don't care, I saw it. There's like a, some kind of dog or animal behind you. Oh, my God. I don't, he's a ghost. Pay no attention to... The he's man behind the curtain over there. Like theaters, like the stagehands in theater, so he's in all black. So if you don't see him, right? But you could totally lay down fabric if you wanted. Put it down. It's up to you, really, what you yeah. want to do. And you could do five sheets, two sheets, one sheet, whatever you want. But it's going to add thickness. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So I, I'm, I'm my next project after I'm done with Captain Marvel um, is I'm going to be making Doc Ock, and Sweet. my. My idea, and I, don't, I always do this to myself, Heather. I'm like, how can I make this as complicated as I, as possible? So I'm like thinking, I, I know. Well, I love tinkering with materials, and I, I, I think the silicone might be one of my favorite materials because I, yeah. I love doing weird things with it. Um, but I was thinking of, you know, fabric comes in sheets of, you know, it comes on a bolt, you cut it out, every pattern piece is flat, and then you sew them together to make curves and you put darts in them and stuff. So why can't I do the same thing with pouring silicone? So for she's got like a kind of a green sort of iridescent -y sort of a shirt. So I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna do this yet, but I was thinking of using a semi-translucent silicone and maybe embedding a little bit of pigmented something in it or 
brushing, like painting the back side of it. So there's a little translucency. So it's coming through. And we had talked about like a, what is the glow, the glow in the dark? Ignite green. Ignite green. Yeah. yeah. Just a little bit of that to, to help it kind of pop underneath. Yeah. Um, you could totally do that. Yeah. So you, I think that's my next I project. Think you should I think. do that. <laughs> I mean, so we have, we actually have like um, fashion students and also real designers make clothing out of our materials. Oh. Um, so even though you're talking about fashion or runway or things like that, uh, it does translate into what something like you might be doing or other cosplayers might be doing because um, my sister sews. I do not sew. I enjoy the things she sew. I enjoy the things you sew. <laughs> I have a sewing machine, and I would love to learn how to sew, so you need to come visit me and give me my tutorials. Okay, perfect. Yeah. But, but like, so that that is confusing to me, so the way that I would approach it would be very different than how you're approaching it, yeah. um, only because of my skill set and my experience, sure. but... But from what you can do, you technically could, let's say, like, you unroll your yards of fabric and you have this huge table and you could embed a little bit of this in there. Mm -hmm. um, whatever the texture <laughs> is, you won't necessarily see it, you know, mm -hmm. of the strip of the um, nylon fabric. Right. But which you could do to give yourself the strength or, or not, totally up to you, you could coat it in silicone. And then you mm -hmm. literally just have silicone that you're sewing as right. opposed, you know, as opposed to making pieces that you then in, you know, making molds of little things that you've seen together, do right. a giant, do like 10 yards of it. Yeah. And then you just literally are sewing silicone together. Yeah. Make your life easier in that way. If you mm. want. Yeah. The, yeah, the other so, yeah I, was, be... I was thinking of, uh, of either sewing things together or, or even just, uh, positioning my seams in such a way so that I can add like a reinforce, reinforce kind of like a panel over the seams to hide them. Um, right. with, Silpoxy as the agent to glue everything because that stuff works really really well. It's a little stiffer though. If you add too much silpoxy, it can be stiff, well, as you probably know. The other yeah. thing you could do, this is more singular to your body, um, would be if you made a life casting of your body, which mm -hmm. you have. So now let's I say don't have one of those yet. You don't have one yet? No, I don't. So okay, that's why I'm thinking, so... like, well, I don't have one, and my body's always changing. That's one. That's one thing that's always kind of hard for me to to like justify going to go get be like uh, if I gain some weight, if I lose some weight, it's you know, and I have like a, like a, you know, a body form that is no longer yeah. fitting me. Like, ugh, what am I going to do with it? But yeah, I would well, love to have a just, body form, I mean, but you could account for that. If you feel like you're going to get bigger by just <laughs> adding really tight shirts on, like seriously, add a whole bunch of layers of tight shirts. So you still get mm -hmm. the form, but then maybe you add it up to a 16th of an inch in thickness, say, or as, as thick as you wanted to go, but let's, <laughs> okay. So let's say you make a life casting of your body, either either with clothing or without clothing, mm -hmm. however however tight you wanted it to be. So if you made it out of body double, which is a reusable silicone that's skin safe, if you made that, you could technically then instead of making something that you have to sew together, you could just brush it in, brush it, it in, brush it in, and it literally is a shirt for you, just you or someone like you, right. 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 Uh, like, seriously. So okay. that, that's the, how I would approach it for me because I don't really yeah. know that much of how to sew. I mean, you guys would laugh at me if you saw me sew. I can make bags because they're straight. <laughs> I can make tote bags. That's about it. I can do a straight line. It's good. But in all seriousness, you could really do that. You're basically making a life casting except it's a t-shirt. Yeah. But it would, it would look – so maybe you don't want it to look like your actual body body. Mm -hmm. So you wear a t-shirt. Um, to kind you know, of make it a more generalized shape more generalized so that yeah. way you're not the hmm. body details yeah okay cool. I mean, well cool. yeah that's i'm gonna have to think about that definitely if you're gonna do it to where you want it reusable use the silicone body double um if you want to do one-offs like hands or fingers or whatever yeah. do the alginate okay well that was one of the other questions that we had actually was yes. um da, 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 da. where is it it's in here. I remember seeing it. Oh, yeah. Can you recommend any tips for making body part molds? Yep. I think a common area is the face and the body, probably, because yeah. if people if people make, like, the Batman or Robin masks, yeah. or, you know, those are popular. Yeah. Um, it's weird. I was just talking to somebody about this earlier today. Um, so you don't have to make a mold of your whole head. You know what I mean? You only want to, you'd only have to make the front of your face, then, to make a piece like that. Right. Um, a lot of times for, let's say, um, TVs or movies, 
even Saturday Night Live, they use our products, and it's one of those things where um, they only need to add a chin. Yeah. Oh, do I need to make, you know, they make a mold of everyone's face in their head and everything, but, like, maybe you're only using this part of it because that's mm-hmm. all you need. So right. depending on what you're doing, we talked about budget. You may only want to have a budget to make chins because all you're yeah. doing is making a chin, you know, right. so you don't have to do the whole face. To me, if you're going to do it, just do the whole face because other projects always come up. Sure, um, yeah. If you want to do your whole head, it's nice because then the helmet that you might make down the line will fit your head. There's right. tons of times where you're like, oh, my God, that's so cool. It doesn't fit my head. You know, <laughs> yeah, it happens like all that. the time. Your head <laughs> is too big, that. too small, right? So <laughs> if you have a custom size mold of your face, or not just your face, but your entire head, you know that it, it'll fit you better. Right. Um, it also is kind of like if I made a generic mask, your face is not flat. So if you made a flat mask, it doesn't fit always perfectly because right. it's not your face isn't flat. Yeah. Um, so it's one of those things. Um, right. The other thing, as far as body pieces, um, alginates, people use those because they're like disposable and they're cheaper, usually a little bit cheaper. So it's basically like for us, ours is skin safe, carcinogen free. Um, you mix powder. We have several different ones, but the Alger Safe is probably the most popular. Um, and it's just powder and water. You mix it together. Um, pretend I'm making a hand. I would put my hand in, pull it out, get rid of it. If I saw any bubbles, slowly put it back in and then wait. So you're saying pour the mixed, the mixture into a container that is big enough to put your, like your hand in and then I was doing a hand or fist or whatever I wanted to make. Okay. Yeah. Pop it in. You're good. Um, some people like pretend I was doing, um, maybe like we talked about Halloween and stuff. Maybe I just want a whole bunch of dead fingers. You know, you could do something like just your hand or fingers. (laughs) I've done it for like, I've done ones like this of life casting so I could put like candy in there, you know. Oh, that's great. There's things that you can make. Or maybe, you know, sometimes (laughs) you make something really cool, um, something that's part of your cosplay, but you don't know how to display it. Mm -hmm. So there's, you know, you might make a life casting of your head to put your helmet on. Oh, yeah. you, You know, you have like 20 helmets you've made over the years. What are you going to just keep them in your closet? Make some right. life castings and put them yeah. on display. I mean, there's ways to showcase things. You might have made like um, some type of armor piece, either a gauntlet or something like that. Well, make molds of your body or somebody's body, yeah. and then you can display <laughs> it. You know, you can display everything. Um, oh, that's and cool. And so it fits perfectly. So it depends on what you're doing. But the silicones are generally for reusable mm-hmm. molds, like because now you've made a, a skin-safe mold um, that you could reuse over and over again. Mm-hmm. Um, also, you have more casting options. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, um, it's not really cosplay-ish, but sometimes people will make like a pregnancy mold. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, but they want to make the casting out of maybe bronze. Oh, so okay. they'll use our materials to do a cold cast bronze. Um, oh, wow. so you can't do that in alginate, you know? So sometimes you have to use a material because of what you want your final outcome to be. Right. So thinking backwards is really good. Of what do I want my final outcome to be? Let's walk backwards to see right. what I need to do for it. So, Mm -hmm. like, if you want your final um, piece to be a prosthetic out Mm -hmm. of platinum pure silicone, Mm -hmm. don't buy urethane rubber because you can't pour platinum silicone into urethane rubber. It won't cure properly. So, thinking thinking backwards, you know, from what I want my final going backwards, it really helps with that part of it, too. And and call call Heather if you have any questions. Yeah, happy to help. (laughs) Um, Just stop by. I would love to stop by. You guys are in Pennsylvania. We're in Mukunji, Pennsylvania. Mukunji. Cool. Mukunji, or as Siri says, Makangi. <laughs> Makangi. So it's like, Makangi. I'm like, okay, girl. You got it. Um, um, so are, is uh, Smooth On located anywhere else? There's a, isn't there a, a, a location in California? We have, um, or is that a Reynolds? Reynolds? Yeah, Reynolds Advanced okay. Materials. Okay. We have 11 locations in the United States. We have a number of other distributors as well. The Reynolds closest to you is the one in Kent, Washington. Yes, I'm so we have happy that that's good. there. Ugh. I was like, I was like, you know, ooh, open in Portland, open in Portland. But then, you know, it, it, for us, it worked better to have it in Kent and help. It actually helps people in Seattle area and also Portland area and in general. But, um, Depending on where you want to go, I mean, you would have had to go to North Hollywood yeah. to get yourself before that one opened. Yeah. yeah. A little no. further. Thanks for thank, – yeah. thank you. Thank you, Smoothon, for putting a shop a little yeah. bit closer to my house. Yeah. That's 
That is a great. And then there's there's lots of lots of amazing makers up there. The um, Bill and Britt Duran um, Punish Props. Oh, yeah. They're like right oh, they're there. Awesome too. Yeah. yeah. Um, last time we were up there, uh, we stopped by to say hello to them. And I I was going to the shop to pick up some stuff. Um, and that's a it's a really cool shop. It's like going into a candy store. It's just mm-hmm. so fun. And it's fun people to see the different awesome. props of what other people have made, like because they're just everywhere. Um, Do it's you really have cool. I don't yeah, think I have there. anything. I don't think I have anything up there. Huh, we'll I would. I would. Yeah, I'd we'll have to change that. Maybe you know somebody. I might. <laughs> Work out. Um. Well, let's see. What else? So we did. We are doing some. We are doing some damage to this list. This is really good. Um. Okay. Holy cow! I think we're almost to the end of this list, actually. Um. How can I how can I practice without breaking the bank so I can use those techniques for uh, the uh, nice nice stuff later, which better projects later for the final yeah. projects later. So what what do you what do you recommend? Um, because a lot of these products are, you know, there you have there's a lot of planning that you need to do to make sure that you're spending your money um appropriately for the products that you want but if yeah if this person this person would like to know how what do you recommend practice wise um mm-hmm. what are the options so a couple things and i do like when you call it practice or gaining experience or whatever you want to call it i totally look at that as part of um prototyping or mm-hmm. part of the learning process um to save money first i would say watch our free videos because we have hundreds of free videos on our website and on YouTube. And watching those, it's like practice. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's like visualization, right? So you're, mm-hmm. you're seeing what to do, how to do. Because you might go, my friend told me this one. And I'm watching it, and it is the wrong everything. <laughs> so watch the free videos. Call us. That's another free thing is calling us. Because you might go, I read this forum, or I'm for sure that I need this. And then, oh, you got the name wrong. Because something right. stuck in your head that was yeah. different than what you wanted to use. Yeah. Um, and so let us help you. Plus, we have a lot of products that are called Smoothcast. Smoothcast, yes. you know, this, 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 this. Yes. So it's it's easy to get them tongue-tied even for us sometimes. And it's like, wait, 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 use this one. So just yeah, kind of figuring very, that part out. Very different. A lot, a lot of them are very, very different. Yeah, they are. They can be, yeah. yeah. Um, so other than that, like actually spending the money when you buy um, like the trial kits, which is like, I don't know if you see that. That yep. guy is a trial kit. It's approximately two pints. It seems like the cheapest way to buy it, and in a sense, mm-hmm. it is. They're mm-hmm. between twenty and thirty bucks generally. Mm-hmm. You try to keep it around the same pricing. Um, depends on where you go and things like that. But um, when you're looking at those, it's, it is a nice, quick, easy way to get mm-hmm. into it. Mm-hmm. But if you really want to save money, price per pound things get cheaper with larger volumes. Yeah. So uh. one gallon unit, five gallon unit. Sometimes five gallon unit is not in anybody's budget, but you might have some buddies. So I always tell people if you can share with people. And it's kind of like, oh, well, this, that. Not really for us to figure out how you share, but it is a way to, <laughs> you're saving money in general, right, right. by buying more. But you can right. definitely share it and figure yeah. out how to do it that way. The other thing is, is when you're doing it, uh, we talked about brush-on molds, pour-on molds, stuff like that. Making a pour-on mold, say, out of silicone rubber. I am going to use less material mm-hmm. because I'm making a thinner mold. Right. Uh, you are buying more things, and initially, if you haven't done mold making before, you're not you're not going to have release agent and sealer and all that type of stuff. But it's the same thing as if like, you know, someone you know is just starting with cooking. I don't have all my seasonings. I don't have every frying pan. Right. You know, so you do have an initial investment if it's something you want to continue in. But then I have a can of release agent or colorant. Those last you depending on your project. You know, they're not going to just be necessarily done in one shot. So. Right. There might be a little initial investment or, like I said, share, um, yeah. but um, doing the brush-on mold is, is a little cheaper because you're using less silicone. The other thing that you can do is, depending on how you want to do it, urethanes tend to be a little cheaper than silicones, but again, if your project calls for an outcome that's not going to work, sometimes it is what it is. Right. Um, you know, but the other the other way for me is, is sometimes I've seen molds where, uh, like for instance, this guy right here. I'm making this um, little gem little thing, gem. and then they make a mold that's like this. Right. Yeah. Make, and you're make like, this. you just spent all your money for nothing. <laughs> and that's okay, but then this mold is very economical, this guy, because 
I have very little waste. It does yeah. the job. So yeah. I think planning is important to, yeah. as far as saving money because um, it's the same when you talked about, oh, do I just stick my hand in there and pour the right. alginate? You know, how do I do it? The containers that you have, sometimes people get containers that are this big. You have to have enough alginate to fill that container. Right. As opposed yeah. to one that conforms more easily. So yeah. sometimes the pre-planning part is a part of it. And I completely understand budget. Like I'm all about budget, trust me. Sure. And yeah. it, it is challenging sometimes to fit um, the materials into your budget. But um, if you plan ahead of time, and we have calculators on our website that tell oh. you exactly how much, you, you know, it's an estimate, but it tells you exactly like here's based on what you give us as far as your uh, volume of whatever you're making. How much we think you're going to need. I always say budget like five or ten percent more because you never know. Okay. But if you use those, that's another way to save money. But yeah, those materials calculators are actually they're really really useful. I use them for the first time on my what was my last project? Uh, was it Hella? No, I don't think it was. Maybe it was Hella. Oh oh wait, it's like it's coming back to me now. I was making a resin mold. And I had to, I had, I had just a little bit of resin left and I was trying to decide if I needed to buy more resin or not. That's what it was. Yeah. I, I didn't have a, a ton of resin left and I was just, I just needed to make sure that I had everything. Um, I had enough or I, that I had to make my, um, my, my mold box smaller. Yep. <laughs> well, the mold box, like, you know, you can use cups. Like if you use, like we use popcorn buckets, we use um, deli cups clean ones obviously clean cups and whatnot yeah. but like it's definitely true that there's times where your deli cup is this big or whatever your container is and you want to just make like this little button yeah it's gonna take a lot more material right. i mean yeah. the other thing too is if you if you try to come back later you may not be able to complete that mold if you order product and it comes a week later your mold, it may not bond together. You might have delamination or something like that. Oh, so. yeah. So that's, so for uh, listeners, that's, that's a really good point. So make sure that you have enough material to fill the box that you're trying to fill or that you're pouring whatever it is that you need to pour because um, the cure, cure times are, um, they're important to pay attention to. Um, I've definitely run into that as well. Like an old silicone might not bond very well to new silicone which I have firsthand experience with. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. It's always it when you happen. don't want yeah. to happen. Yeah, exactly. Like the time that you're like, ah, oh, this came off last time and it <laughs> right. sticks. And then the time you're like, ah, oh, this will stick. And, right. it, and you're like, ah, oh, it does happen that way. Um, so there are also workshops and things like that that people can check out, right? I mean, yeah, if they're yeah. local to you today. guys. Yeah. Oh. That thing I was telling you about the, uh, yeah, yeah. Was, was earlier um, at the Reynolds Advanced Materials. Uh, all those different locations hold material spotlights. Um, they're free in a sense. You sign up online and there's a small fee that you pay, but it's only really to guarantee that hopefully that you're going to show up. And okay. then we actually give you a trial kit that's worth more than that. Oh, um, and cool. So it's it's in the, in a sense that balances out and you kind of win. Plus we give snacks. So there's oh, snacks. Heck yeah. I mean, Sign me up. Snacks. Um, <laughs> but, so those are a couple hours. Um, they're not a full day, but they're generally um, a minimum of two hours, and they're on a specific topic or spotlight. Like mm -hmm. today we did two-part molds, actually. So when you were oh. talking about two-part molds, I was oh, like, cool. eh, what's up with that? What are you like, <laughs> scoping out what we're doing over here? Um, but we really did a two-part mold one today. Because um, it is a question. It's very simple, but it's not. It, it yeah. is something complex that people ask about. But in the end, you're really making just two pour-on molds. Mm -hmm. But really, in the end, but you know, but so we've done them on cosplay, we've done them on two-part molds, we've done them on expanding foams, epoxies, you name it. We try to find spotlights that are um, popular, that so mm -hmm. more people can come. We talk about that, and then in the end, if you have specific questions, we're here to help. Uh, and those are at the Reynolds stores all throughout the United States, and it's listed on the ReynoldsAM.com website. All the okay. different classes. They do life casting classes too. Um, so uh, you know, why would you why would you tell me that? I don't know. Yes, they really okay. do. Okay, I they gotta just go do it. Model. I don't know. No, but but really, it's one of those things. That seems so easy, like life casting, but in the end, you know, you're talking about contours of a body. Mm -hmm. Somebody might have anxiety. You know, mm -hmm. if you're covering their whole face, there's lots of variables because there's a human involved in it. Right. Um, so it's definitely something I would watch the videos and talk to them. And you know, in the rental store, there's 
us in the store, basically, so yeah. it can help you out. But um, you could also, if you come to Smooth On, um, there's what well, we have our two-day seminars. So we have basics and concrete. So basics is basically, you're not going to be an expert, but you're going to learn a ton. We make a brush-on style mold with rigid support shell. We make four-on. You make a life casting of your finger or whatever. Oh, body cool. Body. Um, it's actually cool. You do, um, we actually even do like a, a skin safe um, demonstration where everybody gets to make wounds on themselves, which is actually really fun. Oh, that's um, cool. I love that part. But, and then the concrete one focuses on the concrete aspect. Okay. So, yeah. I don't think I've ever used concrete in any of my projects, <laughs> but you never Not know. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> You could make a, a life casting of your face and then make an outdoor sculpture out of concrete of yourself. Oh, my God. My neighbors would love like that so much. Stuff. Yes, you should totally <laughs> do that. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. That would be great. Then I could, like, dress it up in, like, my costumes and my armor. Could, like, people get those flamingos and they do them seasonally, but it would be. Oh, my God. Be... Oh, I would be everyone's <laughs> favorite neighbor. Yeah. You'd probably be in the local paper. Yeah, probably. And that would be great. Yes, yes, as a nuisance. <laughs> um, well, cool. Um, wow, we talked about so much. Yeah. I think we're we're about wrapped up. Um, yeah. I hope that maybe we can do this again sometime if you're up for it. Like we can tackle yeah. something a little bit more in depth. This really was like a. I wanted to get you on so we could have uh, have give you a chance to speak kind of broadly about some of these pro- uh, questions Basically, that people. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just, I thank you so much for spending this time to talk to me about all of these things. And, um, if anyone has questions for Heather, you can find her probably if you just call smooth on. Um, but if you do have a question about materials, I'm sure just call the number and whoever picks up the phone will be. Yeah. Our our tech support is really good. Um, pretty much everybody has experience with lots of different things, but it's the good thing about to me about our tech support is, um, if there's something we're not sure of, I'll always be like, hold on, let me talk to my colleague. They might know. So we draw upon each other, which is really nice. Uh, cause you're, you're basically drawing on everybody's knowledge who's been here 20, 30 years, you know? So it's kind of cool. Cause I don't know everything I try, what? I try to learn and do, but we all try to help each other out with stuff. So that's how we do. That's awesome. Are you, so are you kind of the cosplay expert? No, kind not necessarily. Away? No? no, I mean, we've met at different cons before. I mean, yeah. obviously. Um, you're, to me, good. you're an expert, Heather. You're uh, the expert. You're the ex- don't worry. I'll do a live casting of you one day. <laughs> don't worry. No, but like, actually, um, I always hesitate with that term because I always feel like with everything, I'm like one oh, of those sure. people that I always want to learn more. I love it. But um, at the same time, though, I mean, all of us here have a lot of experience. So mm-hmm. it's really, really good. And I would never say that I was over one person or the other because sure. a lot of these, a lot of people um, here really have a passion for things, mm-hmm. um, which is cool because you want people who are into it yeah. and not just reading from like a, a piece of dry paper or something. You want people sure. who are actually into it. So pretty much everyone that you talk to here um, has screwed up, has had success. <laughs> you know, we test things. We, we're really in it. Like when you call, it really is us and we, when we relate things to you, it's either something that's happened to us yeah. um, or it's something that we know for certain we've drawn upon from a colleague. Um, so definitely um, for, for me, I love cosplay stuff. I wish I had more time to do it, honestly. I don't know how you do it. Like you have your full-time job and you do this and you do, I'm like, how does this woman yeah, do this? Yeah, I don't know how I do it either. It's. I barely can mow my lawn, okay? So I don't have time <laughs> oh, you to, should do see, stuff to do You should see my lawn. It's terrible. <laughs> I will not that's for sure but yeah I mean so definitely I mean I love all this stuff and I do have experience with it but mm-hmm. I always I learn from you even that's the cool thing is I awesome. like I watch all the videos I love watching everybody's videos just to learn everything and so when you see our videos sometimes we're in the videos sometimes um, it is customer videos that use our products mm-hmm. um, and you make videos too and we want yeah. for us authenticity is really big so we want people to um, try the product. Tell us what you think. Give us feedback. It does yep. help. You know, like when you tell me, "Hey, do you have a product that does this? It would be really cool if you did." And yeah. I'm like, Thank you. Okay. Because, I mean, I hear that from 400 people. Right. Or, or yeah. You know, so you never really yeah. know. But you know, so it is fun to hear all that kind of stuff. 
Yeah. Plus, I like hearing about your projects, so I'm looking at. <laughs> Well, I, I certainly have some uh, some interesting projects coming up, and I'm I'm really excited to finish uh, this Captain Marvel costume because I have a little a very short video that I that I shot of me painting the silicone on the fabric, um, which was a method that you and I talked about like last year when I was making Hella uh, and trying to figure out how to how to best go about that. So for Hella listeners, if you haven't seen my Hella yet. Um, I have a big write-up awesome. on my website. I made I, I made resin molds and I poured silicone in those, and then I glued the silicone pieces onto stretch fabric with silpoxy. So that was a method that I used for that. But for Captain Marvel, what I'm doing now is um, actually painting Ecoflex, uh, and you can use dragon skin as well, but it's semi-transparent, so it's not adding any color to my material. Um, painting that on both both the, the fabric and the, uh, for both fabrics actually, and then just smishing them together, making sure there's a good contact and then letting them cure. Um, and I found that that is working really well for me and I can still sew through it. I can still attach it. So the, I did that so that I could have um, a little gold strip that I didn't have to sew onto the, under the suit because I didn't want to have to have like a, a top stitch and I didn't want to have to do a sat stitch and like the sewing part if I could not sew anything on this suit that would be perfect <laughs> but it was actually really simple and, and really fast like it you know the and the ecoflex that I had um, I have a really slow curing one so it did take a little while but there's some faster ones out there but I think that the pot life was the thing that I needed it was like a 20 minute pot life and that was that was beneficial so I could get all of my silicone on the one piece all at once and then I didn't have to go back into it um, you can apply heat if you have a heat gun that'll accelerate the cure oh well I didn't want to accelerate it I wanted I, I wanted to make sure I had enough time to get all the <laughs> all the silicone on there yeah um, so yeah I set a timer and that's a good tip set a timer for yourself for like five minutes before your pot life is supposed to be I'll up. have my cell phone right mm-hmm. there and I'm like yep. yep yep hey Siri set a timer for 15 minutes um but uh and then also to uh I just want to mention that I'm going to be at a convention at the beginning of July. It's Cosplay America, and I'm going to be doing a, a workshop with um, showing you how to glue silicone onto fabric using Silpoxy, which we talked about. And then also I'm going to do a little, a quick demo on pouring the silicone so you can see how easy it is, because it's really easy. It's just mix, pour. Um, and I'm going to have a mold of uh, my Captain Marvel star that I'm getting. Uh, so I'm really excited about that because I, I, I want people to, to, to use this for their projects. I, I, get, I got a really great response. So I think that it can be something that people can use if they aren't as intimidated. So hopefully after listening to this podcast, they will be more inclined to try something out for their project. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you, yeah. Heather. Thanks, Beverly. <laughs> One thing, you guys, if you don't know Beverly, uh, we, we, you know, we've known each other through the years a little bit, a couple of years, but oh, something that I always found from you, other than, you know, you're willing to get in the trenches, you don't mind testing and figuring out what works, but you always want to share your knowledge. Yes. And so what I like about that is that's how we are as well. We're, we want to show you techniques. We want to show you how you can achieve things. Mm-hmm. And that's you. And I love that you do yeah. your videos and you're doing the podcasts, um, and also the She Prop Talk. And yes. you bring people together, and I love yes. it. Yes, I, think- I love it so too. You. No, really, thank you also. So yeah. I love it. Well, I hope I get to see you sometime coming up in the near future. Maybe I think somewhere. we will see each other. Yes. We will see each other. Sure. <laughs> cool. I'm so excited. So if you want to check out Smooth On, it's smooth-on.com. Yep. Yep. Um, and they've got you guys have a YouTube channel, and then also all the videos are on your on your website as well. Um, We've got all then, the different social media things, but YouTube is a good one because we have playlists. Yeah. It's just oh, when okay. you go on YouTube, just type in "smooth on," and all different playlists. If you want to just hit go and not think, um, if you go on <laughs> smoothon.com, it's my favorite. <laughs> it's, it's, it's what I'm doing right now. No, when you go on smoothon.com, you can type in keywords, which I like. So you know, if I want to type in. Uh, mold star it'll take me to all the things involved in mold star if i type in and i don't even pretend i didn't even know what mold star was i could just right. type in two-part mold yeah. you know or release agent or something like that or help or yeah it'll, it'll, it has, <laughs> <laughs> what do i do right if you type in beverly i don't know what it does oh my gosh like, <laughs> but actually if you type in cosplay it'll take you to all the cosplay stuff yeah um, you guys have a section yeah. don't you, you have a section. A section for that? that's awesome 
I'm always adding, like we're constantly adding videos. Um, if you go on smoothum.com on the top, there's a button, a link that says applications. That way, if you don't know where to start, it's in alphabetical order from like architectural, cosplay, medical. It goes through. So if you're like, where do, what do I do? Props, uh, FX and props. You can click oh, on cool. that. It makes your life easier. Awesome. Yeah. Well, go do that, listeners. And um, thank you again so thank much. You. Ooh. I appreciate it. I yeah, will see you I, soon. Yes, definitely. And once again, I'm Beverly from Down and Creative Studios. You can find me on all the social, the same same name. And if you are not yet a member of SheProp, um, feel free to come on over and join our little group. You can find us on Facebook. Um, and yeah, that's it for now. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, Heather. Bye. See ya.